I'm Todd Pappy, game director at God of War Ascension. What you're about to see is a making of video that we've been shooting over about two plus years. It gives you a good idea of the inception of an idea all the way through to the final product. Keep in mind that this is a work in progress. Enjoy. With the Mana Core, the whole idea behind it was almost like the Chimera, where we had different stages to the fight. It's a completely new experience. How you doing, Is? I've been changing them a bit. The wrist is still really thick, and for some reason that irks me. I don't, I don't know why. I can't really put my finger on it, but I think the biggest thing for me was just getting that kind of taper feel where it goes from the elbow to the wrist. We'll go back and forth with a lot of iterations trying to get something that feels cool. It has to work for animation. It has to feel fun and interesting. We're going for, you know, the, the ultimate look. So the thing has to be huge, badass, you know, cool. Like that feels more natural to me, I guess. In the case of the Manticore, we come in and take a look at the early concept stages and just kind of give our little input uh, to make sure that by the time it gets to modeling and then and, and it gets rigged, everything is uh, well thought out. So, but you don't mind the longer tail? No, that's fine. All I right. think I think Sweet. actually it'll help uh, when the character's flying also. So you just need like a final three quarter now? Yeah. God of War 3 is kind of a learning curve project, I think, for a lot of the guys, and now everybody's just kind of up to speed and running. So it's, uh, the characters will be a lot better in this game, actually. The Manticore is essentially part scorpion, which is his tail. He has the body of a lion, the arms of a man, the wings of a bat, and the jaw of a shark, which will unhinge and completely open like a shark jaw. It opens very far so that he can spit these large fireballs. In the concept, they really like this big oval that you got from a shark. So that's kind of what I did. So these bottom teeth are more shark-like. These upper teeth, same thing, very shark-like. These will actually be redone. We don't like them. Then he also has the chest of a human. You can see this is all human, and it leads down into these kind of very scorpion-like plates. A lot of this is based on scorpion. These big hard plates, then these other plates with flesh in between, and then these inset plates with flesh in between it. So all of this will move very fluidly, but it's still a plate. The hardest part were the wings. The rest of it's all fairly straightforward. The wings essentially fold up and he walks on these two knuckles. We went back and forth quite a bit on the wings. Wings are very difficult. We actually went to Sony Imageworks last game, trying to ask them how they did wings, if there's any ideas they had. And they just create two versions, a folded version and an open version. It's very hard to do. The big discrepancy was in how this works. Is they transition off fingers? Are they a hinge? We needed them to be able to fold up so that the character could swipe. And this is what we came up with. There were always spikes here, but there was also a mane. There wasn't hair on him anywhere else. And it really didn't make any sense to me that he would have a mane of hair and no hair anywhere else. So I kind of pitched Todd on the idea of just spikes. He tentatively agreed. He hasn't cut it so far, so. So far, so good. All of the textures for this character were painted in ZBrush, where I paint little cracks. There's actually normal map detail of those cracks. So you're really supporting the sculpt and driving home and accentuating the detail that you have in the sculpt. It all works together just to look nicer. It looks more natural. Metacore's arms are human arms, but they're also a bat wings. So I was working with an animator who had an idea of how he wants this thing to work. And my job was to actually make rig work in the way he wanted it to work. And the solution was I want to have one control that basically makes it look good. So this is the prototype of the wing rig. So here's the main control and it sort of allows you to move the whole character around. This would be sort of half the body of the metacore here and the wing starts with this human-like arm. We could make lots and lots of controls to animate this wing, but animator really wanted to have a single control that would just do exactly what they want. And this control became this guy, this large control in the middle of the wing. So I'll show you a little bit what, it's, what it can do. So this control can basically mimic the bellowing of the wing itself. This animation itself, just be able to pull this up and down and move it around like any way you want, drives secondary controls that allows any, allow animators to do more precise animations. So that was the really big breakthrough for us, to create something that allows animators animate without having to break it or struggle with many, many FK controls. And so we're planning to use this rig for pretty much every creature we have that uses bat-like wings. Uh, so hopefully going forward, we, you know, this rig will work for many years to come. 
When I first saw the concept art, I thought, holy shit. I thought I was going to have a lot of trouble making this guy move. Izzy's probably one of the best draftsmen I've ever seen, and, and so he had all these beautiful drawings. And of course, we went with the, the most challenging design, as we do. Probably the most complicated rig I've seen here outside of the Poseidon fight. The Manticore, he's got all of these tail joints that move around. He's also got this stretchy little pelvis here. We can move up and down. On top of that, he's got all of these wing controls right here. And you can see there's these diamond shapes. And what they do is kind of control where this thing flexes, but for extra control, we've also got these other joints that come in here and they can actually rotate just to finesse it a little bit. So all of those things included, it's probably three or four times as complex as Kratos' rig. It's such a strange design, really having a hard time wrapping my head around it. It's not until we actually start to break the guy down and hurt him that I started to enjoy animating him. Once he's on the ground, folds up those wings. We had to do a lot of trickery with the wings just to get them to work. Uh, you can see the size of these right now is actually a lot smaller than when they're in the air because we're, we're actually scaling the joints down. When we had the wings bigger, they were way out here, so, so you couldn't quite read what was going on. It's still hard. It's so unique and it's so foreign. People tend to recognize things through silhouette and this just is completely alienating. When he's on the ground, he's got another tail strike. Tail looks good. He's got another move where he goes to the air and claps his wings. That knocks the player back. One of the best and worst parts about working on the God of War series is that our creature designs are nuts. As an animator, you're constantly challenged to kind of find ways to make this stuff look good. When you get to make Kratos kill the stuff that you're not that into, it's equally as fun. boss really want to make it really formidable for the player um, when, when he plays through it. One of the tricks that we use is to kind of tease a character over a period of time. So with Manicore, you see him throughout a number of stages in Delphi where he'll make appearances and then when you actually get to the fight it's just that much bigger because you've, you've seen this guy, he's been bothering you the whole time and now you've, you've actually put a, a personality to the character. He's a huge creature, he's flying. We haven't had a character this large before in the air, and also that he'll transfer to the ground, just like he did there. In comparison to Kratos, he's a really large character, so he takes up a lot of the space in the arena. And when he does hit Kratos, you can see that Kratos really moves back far, so that you know he displaces Kratos, basically. One new thing that Manicore has is that we're doing away with prompts that are on the screen for the CS moves, so this makes it more cinematic. There's no buttons that appear on the screen that cover up any of the action that's going on. This is one of those buttonless mini games. So you can see the giant tells that he does on the attacks. That's very clear for the player to read so that they can evade out of the way and then retaliate with their blades. 